Hi! Welcome to the second episode of The Fables of Knitting. I have to apologise for the light. It's really grey and dark <laughs> and I'm sure I'm sitting here in a very moody light and I've got my Christmas tree up and I put the lights on in the hopes this is for, that it will help some it's not ideal for showing up nowhere, but let's do it anyway. You probably can't even see me. Uh, first off, thank you so much for your response last week. I have to admit, it was terrifying. Like, I was nervous on the verge of being terrified. It felt a lot more personal than Instagram. Instagram is very, it's a, it's a very curated um, profile that you make and <laughs> oh, which of these 15 pictures do I look the best in? You don't really get that here. Just welcome to all my quirks and weird habits. Um, so I was really nervous <laughs> and it seems like everyone else who do these things are very like nonchalant about it oh, I don't really care if people like it, if they don't like it, yeah. Whereas, it, and if that's true, then good for them. Uh, I was a nervous wreck that after Sunday afternoon. And <laughs> whenever, and then people started watching and commenting and sending me messages. And every time it happened, I, there was no chill. Like, oh, that's nice for me. I was literally sitting, sitting there going, so thank you. I love you. I got a few questions that I figured I would answer for you. Uh, a couple that were asked several times from several different people. Um, one of them was, where is my accent from? Most Norwegians speak English with an American accent. Where usually, usually teachers in school speak with American accents. And there's also Hollywood, so we're surrounded by... We don't dub things in Norway unless it's for very, very, very young children. Everything gets... Everything on TV that's uh, international is usually in the original language and you just get subtitles, as well as the cinema. Um, and most of it is, let's face it, American. Um, however, I lived in the UK for a bit. I went to university in London. I uh, went to study costume design at Wimbledon College of Art. And then I stayed for a bit over a year after I finished my degree. And the accent rubbed off. I, I used to have an American accent when I was a child and a teenager. Um, but then, I feel like English is a lot easier as well. But each to their own. Um, that's the story of the accent. Someone else asked <laughs> my favourite question. As the last episode talked about the Hallows collection, the uh, Harry Potter inspired knitting pattern collection that I released this autumn. Um, uh, you want to know what Hogwarts house I am? Best question ever. I have always felt that I was a Gryffindor. And so you can imagine my utter joy when I also got sorted into Gryffindor at Pottermore. Pottermore is, of course, the ultimate decider in these things. So if you are unsure, do, do the Pottermore quiz. You can also figure out what Patronas you are and what wand you have. I can't remember the wand except that it had a unicorn hair. And my Patronus is a Manx cat, which is some sort of Irish cat, I think. I did Google it. I can't remember. They're cute. <laughs> my friend... <laughs> oh. <laughs> my friend told me <laughs> last Friday <laughs> that her Patronus... <laughs> A Patronus. <laughs> so, <laughs> a Patronus is a salmon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> but from this is the salmon. Uh, it's not so much that she got the salmon. It's more the fact that they put it in as an actual option. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she was disappointed. Um, I would have been very disappointed as well. I know that I told my dad, and he said, oh, the salmon look like goats, they're really strong, they're like one of the strongest animals around. Which is probably what they were thinking, but I don't think anyone wants to be a salmon, not to be a salmon, but to have a salmon Patronus anyway. If you're a salmon Patronus, I'm sorry for mocking you, but it is funny. Um, if anyone wants to tell me what Hogwarts house they're in, or what their Patronus is, I would actually love to hear because I am a nerd in that sense. So if you, like me, don't really have anyone to bug with these things, bug me! Please do! Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Anyway, knitting. That is why we are here. <laughs> Not the Hogwarts houses and Patronuses. Um, I'm sure there's another podcast for that somewhere. I should check it out. Last week, as I said, was the Hellos collection. Today is the 19th of December, so it is time for the Yuletide collection. Yay! I am wearing the Yuletide collection. The first one, actually, it is the Nutcracker jumper. I will do. It is a lovely warm. I say lovely about my own things, I'm probably going to keep doing that. Um, bear with me. Uh, <laughs> sorry, got tears in my eyes after all the salmon laughing. <sighs> this is the Nutcracker Jumper. This was the first one that I designed for this collection and I got the idea, idea to do a Christmas collection after having done the Hallows collection because I loved doing collections um, more than I love doing individual patterns as I led with the Hallows collection. Um, and like festive collections, who doesn't love a festive collection regardless of what sort of collection it is? We all do advent calendars and oh, it's so fun. Um, you could collect them over the next couple of Christmases and one each year. The inspiration for this jumper came from the wooden nutcrackers that you get in Northern Europe during Christmas. I think I have one on my tree. Why did I not think of this before? There it is. Come on, you. It's tangled up in tinsel. <laughs> it's tangled up in a lot of tinsel. <laughs> There you go. This is a, uh, a nutcracker. It is not a, an actual nutcracker. It is just a Christmas decoration for the tree. The original ones did crack nuts. And I think they're originally from Germany. You get them as decorations through all of Northern Europe. And they're so festive. They're very, very, very festive. Um, he's got a uniform on. As you can see in a lot of Christmas themed characters, even like Santa, he's got he's wearing a uniform, and all of Santa's elves wear uniforms, these guys wear uniforms, and so in a way, the uniform, like an opulent uniform with fan fastenings and buttons and all that jazz, it's quite festive for me. <laughs> Maybe that's why uniforms are festive. I think they are. And so this jumper, I wanted to make a jumper that was reminiscent of your festive Nutcracker uniform. With all its buttons and decorations. So this jumper is knit with pop cords running up the front and running up the sleeves. And it has seed stitch or moss stitch, depending on what you call it. It's the same thing when I Google it. 
uh, running up inside the row of popcorns on each sleeve and running up the bust as well. Uh, for me, this was reminiscent of said uniform. This is quite simple in the sense that it's knit in the round uh, with just normal knit stitches up until you get to this pattern and then you only do the, the popcorn or the bubble, bubble or whatever you call it. Um, that was a horrible pronunciation. Uh, you only do that every six rows. I can't remember my own pattern. Every few rows. <laughs> Uh, and then there's the seed stitch, which is quite automatic once you get into it. It's like a ribbing, just like a chessboard instead of always doing them on top of each other. Uh, it's ribbed at the bottom and at the cuffs. The sleeves are slightly below you, reminiscent of a bishop sleeve, but not too much. Here, just at the cuff, to create a bit more of a feminine uniform. The billowy bishop sleeves aren't very common in menswear. Ladies wear, we well, can do anything we want. And of course, if you're a man and you want to knit this, go for it. And you do you. Uh, but this, I love bishop sleeves. I think they're very flattering. And I think they're flattering on any shape. So I am a bit of a fan of them and I use them quite a bit. And I quite, I like, they're just a bit more chill. And dressed up, very good combination. It has a, double knit ribbed neckline so you knit up to there ribbed and then you knit a row per pearled and then you knit again and then you tuck it down and you hem it in this it's really nice and toasty which is good for winter if you knit, if you want to knit this uh, for a slightly warmer climate than like minus 12 celsius as it is in norway now i might want you probably want to do a single knit, a single knit neckline not the double one I love the double one for winter in Norway. Uh, it is knit in Pickles Soft or Pickles Muk Merino in the colour Cloverleaf, which is the same dye lot as the Manila cardigan, but in a different yarn. Again, as I mentioned uh, last week, this yarn is cruelty free, which is important when you buy Merino yarns. So make sure you do your research. It's very soft. It's, oh, it doesn't have like a, hint of an itch which is very nice i'm not that sensitive but i did also knit a hat and some leftover yarn for this and my head is sensitive but it doesn't itch at all that is my nutcracker jumper which was the first one let me show you the sketch oh, where is it? so i did I got the idea for this from an original 1950s vintage jumper that I had in my shop, which was not identical, but it had the row of popcorns down the sleeves and some zigzaggy moss stitch things. It was really it was quite stunning, uh, but a lot more intricate than this one. So I sort of was inspired by that and then wanted to make it more Christmassy. And this was born. This was the sketch that I did. Put my camera some time. You can see the more stitch and the popcorns. And when doing these sketches, it's also just a reminder for myself of how I want the cut to be. Do I want it to be form fitting? Do I want it to billow out a bit somewhere? How's the neckline gonna be? Then I just try to replicate it when I knit. When I start knitting things, it is I know roughly how many stitches I need to cast on on a certain needle. I'm usually a needle for millimeter kind of girl to create what I want. And then it's just experiment experimenting from there on out. I do have to undo everything every once in a while and unravel it. Luckily not too often. The next thing that I did for this collection was this cozy thing, knit incidentally in a yarn called Pickles Cozy. <laughs> Ooh. It is a high necked, double high neck, so you, you can fold it down, jumper with 
a high waist, not a crop top, high waist, so good with high waisted skirts and trousers. Obviously, if that's not your thing, just knit it longer. That goes for all, all these high waisted patterns. It also has billowy bishop sleeves. These are a lot more pronounced. These are just like a hint of, these are quite large, but not so large that you can't fit them un under your coats. That will be <sighs> unpractical. So I try to avoid too unpractical. It... I try not to make them too impractical and not sacrifice practicality for looks. So this is just the right amount of bishop sleeve to actually be able to wear under your coats. It is knit ribbed with a form-fitting ribbing at the cuffs and then the bishop sleeves. Raglan. This also has raglan, I forgot to say. Yes, raglan with bishop sleeves, high ribbed neckline that is super cosy. It is knit in the colour Red Diamond, which is my favourite colour, deep red. As I mentioned in the previous episode, <clears throat> I choose colours for each individual design, not for my personal preference. So whenever those two merge, I am a very happy knitter. And I sit with this and this. I am planning, I have already bought yarn for a second one in white. And if you <laughs> watched the previous episode, you will not be surprised at these two colours. I I have already worn this a lot. It's it's really cold in Oslo at the minute, and this is very lovely to wear. No itch. Get knit on needles, five millimeter with a four and a half millimeter ribbing at the neckline and the cuffs, etc. This is also four millimeter. It is, as I stated, my favourite needle size. The sketch. Where are you? Is here. I, the, I didn't really, it wasn't so much inspiration that struck for this, I just knew that I wanted a super cosy jumper and I feel like a lot of cosy jumpers are not very flattering and they're not very feminine and there's nothing wrong with that, I just like my jumpers as flattering as they can be. So when sketching I just thought what are the most flattering shapes to do in a slightly oversized cosy jumper. They have it. These are, this is my solution to that question. The next one that I did was the juniper jacket. Oh, the buttons are undone. I wanted to do a Christmas a colour work cardigan with something rem like a hint of festive or a hint of Christmas or a hint of winter without doing like reindeer or yeah <laughs> reindeer or gifts or Santa because <sighs> again there's so many other designs for that and they're great oh a really lovely Christmas jumper um, I don't remember the name because I just thought of this. I wasn't planning on mentioning it. But Lila, Lila, let me double check, has a jumper that was published uh, this late autumn, early winter with jumping reindeer. And it is, oh, it's so stunning. The jumper, it, it was Lila, Lila. You did a really lovely festive jumper and it's called Fabulous Festive sweater. Oh, it's really nice. And that's like, it's super festive, but so gorgeous. Not ugly Christmas jumper, this is gorgeous Christmas jumper. And I wanted to do a gorgeous Christmas jacket um, that was slightly understated and could be worn through winter, even after, after Christmas was done. So I, like Norway in winter is it's a lot of white and a lot of dark green with snow covered like conifer trees everywhere which is a really lovely 
Christmassy, wintry image, especially when they're like laden with snow. So this is the juniper jacket. It has a rose of like a juniper barnwash green. I don't know what that's called in English. Bits of <laughs> bits of conifers, bits of fern needles, bits of tree stuff running up <laughs> the front on each side of the button band. It is knit in pickles pure wool. I chose the colours avalanche and cloverleaf for this. It is knit from the bottom up, back and forth in stockinette, as are all my cardigans. The button band is picked up and knit ripped as is the neck. This is it. These buttons, I also showed them to you last time. I made my sister-in-law buy them and bring them to me the last time they were in, the last time they were coming to Oslo from Bergen. As I mentioned, Knappebua is heaven, which is a Bergen located button store. They are the same ones that I used in the Minerva cardigan. And I knew I wanted them because I it has your typical, typical of me, puff shoulders and normal tight fitting sleeves, high waisted, festive, but not, but not overly so. You can also wear it for the duration of winter after Christmas. The last one, there's four of them in this collection, is the silver belt dress. Yeah, showing off a dress isn't going to be easy. It also needs to be tight. Not done my preparations properly today. The silver belt dress. Look at this. It is a warm winter dress knit in bulky pickles tweedy on needles five millimeters it had it's knit from the bottom up uh, in the round so make sure not to twist your knitting you'll end up with a turban really really big turban uh, and then you knit it upwards uh, and then you knit it up towards your torso you knit and you knit and you knit and then you start decreasing in the sides to, to create a figure knit dress from the hips up to the waist and then you knit a bit more and then you increase again a couple of times to create a figure knit torso and then you knit on the sleeves and there's a bit of Buff sleeves, there's a keyhole neckline that can be worn at the front and at the back. And when that starts, you start knitting it back to front. <sighs> In stock net. It's really it's a really quick knit. I think it took my test knitters, two of them commented they said it was a quick knit. They knit it in under a week each. And I knit mine in under a week as well. As the yarn is so bulky. I know a lot of people are a bit, are a bit scared of larger projects because uh, they're worried it will just stay there in their knitting stash forever and not get anywhere or that you'll feel like you're not getting anywhere but do not worry with this you can probably see it's quite bulky and I prefer a smaller stitch but for this I really like it it's super warm and almost a bit rustic with the tweed yarn and the larger stitches. It's a really good Christmas dress or just a winter dress. I'm planning on wearing this all winter. Yesterday, I took pictures of this yesterday outside and it was minus 12 or 13. Uh, and I was just wearing this and I had woolen tights on and boots and stuff. It was so toasty, <laughs> but my fingers and my hands and my ears were raw pink. So I look, I look, it looks like my skin is freezing, but I, I was really toasty. Just a good testament to the yarn, the tweed yarn that they, they do. 
well, again, it's not itchy, at least not for me. So I just wore it straight on my body and I had tights on. I chose the colour Pearl, Perla. And this is cream with hints of yellow and sky blue that I can see at least. I love the effect of Tweed yarn, it's my favourite. It's quite rustic but not shabby chic which I avoid at all costs. It's, it feels quite authentic. The neckline, as I said, has a keyhole. I chose to do a red velvet ribbon as this is a festive collection, the Yuletide collection. I'm also inclined to wear it with the ribbon at the front. You can wear it with the ribbon at the back. When I took pictures, I included both. When you wear it at the back, it's a bit more casual. At the front, you're a bit more dressed up, more like a gift. You can, of course, also not go for a ribbon. You can do a button or you can do traditional metal fastenings. So there are so many options and you can personalize it depending on your color, which way you want to wear it and what fastenings you choose. Um, the sketch. Is, I didn't show you the juniper jacket sketch. This is the Silver Bells dress sketch. It turned out quite similar. The sketch is slightly different in real life. Less, there's less body to it in real life. This is the juniper jacket. I had, oh man, I was having so much trouble doing the conifer branches the way I wanted to do them just I, cause I, I didn't want them to go that way that would be too much like a tree and there was, I, I was able to find other knitting patterns that had those patterns and I wanted to do my own and I spent so much time figuring out the best way to angle them and finally very happy with them. I'm not really good, I'm not the best at colour work. I prefer textured knits such as popcorns and different stitches. But I admire people who are skilled in colour work and I want to get better at it. So when I designed this, <clears throat> I was very aware of the fact that I'm not the best at it. I'm I have trouble with the the threads at the back and they're often too tight and then I try not to and I'm really aware of it, and then they're too loose. Uh, so when looking for test knitters, I specified that they had to have experience with colour work so they could, <laughs> just to see if it was possible to do it better than I did, and it was. It did. <laughs> I'll show you the inside of it. It's horrendous. I don't really care about the insides. I know a lot of knitters do. I don't. I. It's, it's probably, I have a background, like I said, in costume, and the insides really don't matter. This is the inside. It's not that bad now. But I think a lot of people with more experience in colour work could have done this a lot more neatly than what I have been able to do. And also what I have the patience for. When you don't care, it's difficult to put a lot of work in. But if you do care, keep caring. It's good, it's good quality. When choosing the colours, I mentioned this last time, I choose colours for each garment uh, so that it will enhance the design when published. I don't choose them for myself. I knew with this collection that I wanted everything to be festive. I wanted red, whites and greens, which are for me the most festive colours. I wanted to vary it, so I didn't want like four red things, two green and two white. I wanted a good variation. So I went down to Pickles and started looking at all the yarns and laying out each of the three colours. in Because this collection, it's all different yarns for each garment, which is fun because the last one was a lot of pure wool and then just one soft merino. This is Tweedy, there's Cozy, there's pure wool and there's soft merino. Which is quite fun to work with all these different types of textures and yarns. But I put out red, green and white in all these shades 
and I started eliminating. I wanted the right festive green, the right festive red, obviously white is white. Um, I had originally thought that I would knit the dress in red, but the red wasn't festive enough compared to the red of the cosy. This is a really nice deep festive red. So I went with a sort of, I just thought, wit. When picking, I went for the best festive shade that the yarns could produce. So even though I originally thought, <coughs> sorry, this would be red, it is cream because this red was better. The same goes for this. I'd originally thought maybe this would be cream, but then this was the best festive green that they had. Obviously the juniper jacket, uh, I already knew what colours to go for there, so that one was set, the easiest one to pick out. Uh, my test knitters chose some lovely colours, none of them chose the same colours that I did, and they didn't know what colours I'd done it in, because they'd only seen the sketch when they started. So I just figured, oh, everyone's going to do the same thing, but none of them did. How brilliant is that? I'll ask permission, and then I'll see if I can pop them in here. There was an orange one, she'd hand dyed her own yarn, orange and yellow. And I'd never thought that would work, but it was absolutely, oh man, well done her uh, for seeing that, because I wouldn't have. And there's a light blue one with like mint or green conifer branches, so stunning. And there's a grey one, I think one has, I think one of them has pink, I, I, that, was, that was such a good surprise. I thought everyone would think the same way I do, but luckily... <laughs> didn't. Uh, so go check out the hashtags. I mentioned this earlier as well in the previous episode. Check out the hashtags. My test knitters have been hashtagging away as they posted their test knits and the colours they choose. I, I always admire them because everyone prefers different things and I'm very set in what I often choose because I have, I have an image of the final product. This is what I aesthetically want to produce. Whereas they're allowed to just go, hey, I prefer pink or I prefer blue. And then they'll do that. And I love seeing all your color choices and how they fit you. So please use, use the hashtags. Go check them out. My test knitters for this collection are so talented. Such a talented bunch of ladies. They were all ladies. Do you leave your tea bag in? I do. I like a strong tea. Do you have a dash of milk in there? That's probably why. When we have visitors, I automatically leave the tea bag in. And the last time I did it with my sister, she couldn't drink her tea. Mm, so nice. If you don't start your day with a cup of tea, have you even started your day? Comet. Comet. Right, it is still one week, not even one week, it's a couple of days. It is on Thursday, Friday, Laura, Sunday, Monday. There's five days until Christmas when I'm filming this. When I publish it, there might only be a couple of days until Christmas. But there's still time to enjoy knitting these in your Christmas time. They have all been published at this point. The Silver Bells dress was the most recent one. Uh, and I hope you enjoy them. I hope you have fun knitting them and I hope you enjoy wearing them and get loads and loads of wear out of them, wherever you are in the world. Uh, if you have any questions about the collection or about anything, mostly, <laughs> comment or send me a message on Instagram. I, as I said, appreciate your comments and your messages immensely. So please do continue to let me know if you like it. <laughs> don't tell me if you don't. Uh, no, of course you can, but no, be nice, please. <laughs> and yeah, 
that's it for this time. I think this will be the last episode I do this year because I don't want to bug you over Christmas and we will see each other again in 2019. I have exciting, exciting plans. This book is already filled with things to come. So do stay tuned and enjoy your Christmas. I hope you get loads of knitting done and that you've stacked up on all the yarns that you need over the holiday. And Merry Christmas! So in case anyone is interested, I collect Christmas tree decorations. It started when I lived in London and I started buying decorations for each Christmas when I got back. I bought this in Stratford-upon-Avon when visiting a friend. There's a Christmas shop there. It's open all year round. There's another nutcracker. These are from when I was a kid. My mother bought me that giraffe last year, I think. This one is from my boyfriend's trip to Amsterdam this year. He also bought some, bought some lovely porcelain clogs. How cute are they? Focus. Minnie and Mickey Mouse are from Mallorca. Couldn't find any Christmas decorations apart from at the Disney shop. So they are ice skating. This lovely glass house bought in Sabi in Denmark. These like this is the typical traditional Danish historical house. It's a really lovely town, so I would recommend going to anyone. This queen, Swan Princess, is from Prague. I love this one because this is when I had harassed my boyfriend. We went to Prague with some of his mates to buy. I had to buy Christmas press, uh, a Christmas decoration and there was a Christmas shop and we went in and he chose this one which is why I love it even more look at her where are you? focus what a lady what else do we have that I have collected my mother this was this year ballet slippers it's an old Santa Claus that we've had as long as I can remember. This is the Snooze Mimidi can from Mimitrola. My boyfriend bought this when he was working in Finland this year. It was just a keychain, but I made it into a Christmas decoration. We're creative that way. The same thing happened with this one. This is a mummy. bought it in Berlin at the Neues, I don't know how you pronounce it, museum which has the Nefertiti bust and it is the most stunning, so beautifully curated. We bought this, <laughs> not very German, but one of our most memorable experiences from that trip. We bought another, actually that one lived inside this one. It's like a, an Egyptian babushka doll. And I, again, I made these into Christmas decorations with a glue gun and some ribbon. They weren't originally that way. What else? My mother bought me these too a couple of years ago. And this I also bought in Stratford-upon-Avon, this glass bell. This seal is a gift from my boyfriend first Christmas that we were together. He didn't even know that I collected them back then, or maybe I'd said and don't remember. It's a wooden seal. <laughs> Looks a bit angry. He's not very happy with being in, covered in tinsel. This is a ball from Lavik Kirsha, Lavik Church. My boyfriend's surname is Lavik. And he bought it when driving through that area. This is summer. These are the ones, I think, with the squares. 
This one is another lovely lady, ballerina. I can't remember where I bought her. I did buy her specifically for my collection when I was traveling. And then there's just some generic normal ones as well. I bought this spire on Etsy. It's an old 1950s one. I was told. Da -da! Merry Christmas!